Okay, this is on learning plan six for today. Um, we're going to go over voicemail, which is a, a, a kind of our final feature, and then giving you the opportunity to work with a final system that you actually integrate all the way from the beginning um, from scratch. The first thing I want to do, it's only going to affect the brand new phones, um, the, the GXB 2100s, the new phones. Um, I do want to be changing the screen on there. Another thing to remind, if you have the new phones, just leave them plugged in and serve on the back of the desk. I would like to keep them on and functioning all the time. And make sure that you're setting up at least line four, um, you know, for today as your, for all your phones as a classroom extension so that we can, you know, integrate, integrate with the classroom server. For your other activities later on when you actually integrate voicemail or implement voicemail, you can use any of your top three lines with your servers and your groups. In addition, once you get to your final project, you'll be reprogramming all four of your lines, so you're not going to be, you know, be part of the classroom for part of the project. As far as the project goes, it it is it's kind of a bigger project. It's it's redoing the things we've done. You're implementing it together with a team, just two people, and you know, getting the whole system in place. I'll go through all that later on um, when we get to that point. Right now, for the new um, for the new phones. Right now on your phone, you have um, just a very generic screen. It has Grand Stream and it has the IP address and all the buttons on there. We're going to change the logo on the middle of here. Some of your phones may have already done that um, if I gave that to you. And it, again, it only applies to new phones. Sorry about that. We're hoping to get a couple more so that eventually they'll all be the same. How we can do that is um, on the phone side, so I need to go and actually work with my phone. And my phone's IP address is 172.16.207.100. So I log into my phone. And so I'd like the rest of you to follow along that, again, that have the new phones. Under Settings, click on the Settings tab up on top. and you have XML applications on the left-hand side. There's an idle screen. We're going to change that screen from the Grand Stream logo um, to the LTC logo, um, just because we can. It was actually a, a fun activity over the weekend, figuring out how to do that. You have to take an image um, and convert it to monochrome, so true black and white um, bitmap image, it can only be like 50 bits by like 100 bits so wide. And then you have to convert it to base 64 and then put it into an XML file. It was fun. <laughs> um, so as long as we have it, might as well use it. Um, the idle screen download right now says it's disabled. And we want to do the drop down and we want to enable it using TFTP. <clears throat> now you can say yes at this point and then reboot your phone. That takes a really long time. So I'm just going to click Save and Apply right here. And this is where I'm hoping it's going to work. Oh, I need to type in the IP address of the server. The idle screen XML server path. That's going to end up being my computer up here. I'm running a TFTP server on my computer right now just so we can get that image out there. It's 172.16.193.11. So we want to enable and use TFTP, and then type in 172.16.193.11 for the server path, all of you. And then, like I said again, click Save and Apply. Okay, good. Um, so now we're going to switch back over to the phone itself. <clears throat> switch over the phone itself. And with the menu button, we want to hit the menu button. And we want to arrow down to preference, the preference screen. And then hit menu. 
hit the middle button, arrow down to preference, and then hit the menu button again. And then we want to arrow down to download um, screen XML. And again, hitting enter. And it should say downloading the screen XML. And if all works properly, you should end up with the LTC logo instead of the Grandstream logo. Um, the bad thing is when you do a hard reset on the phone, reset the factory default, that goes away. So um, if you ever need to do that, um, let me know. I can give you the image file back again. Other than that, just go and manage the accounts individually. <clears throat> so when you are need to do something on here, just go to the account and manage the accounts, account one, two, three, and four, um, and don't do a factory reset unless you really, really need to. Uh, make sure that you all have static IP addresses, by the way. Try to have a static IP address of the um, location where you are. In my case, I have 172.16.207.100 because I'm the 00 station. Just use your computer number one. 11, 112, 113, 121, 131, 141. So, any questions so far? In addition to updating the screen, which is just a simple XML thing, um, you can, it's called provisioning. You can provision the whole phone using different downloads as well. And by the phone just booting, it will go out and say, hey, I need a configuration file. Almost, almost like um, DHCP, hey, I need a configuration. It goes out, finds the configuration specifically for this phone, and then downloads the configuration, including extensions, including phone settings, including background, including soft keys, everything. So the whole phone is programmed through that provisioning. What's nice about that is you can do a factory reset on it, when it reboots, it brings it right back to where you had it configured. So we're not going to go quite that far. We need to move on to other things in the class, um, virtualization, other topics, but we could go on and on and on. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, to change the IP address of the phone, it's you have the, the newer style, what style? Okay, yeah, it's under network and then basic settings. Make sure you actually click on this button that says um, um, statistically, no, that's not it, statically configured as, and then 172.16.207.1XX. Your subnet mask is 255.255.240, because that's what the school is. The gateway for this network is 172.16.192.1, and our DNS server is 172.16.16.140. Um, if you don't have the first DNS server, you'll be okay because we're doing everything IP-based, except for the firmware. The firmware would be, in fact, named. We, we called it firmware.grandstream.com. It wouldn't be able to resolve that if you don't have DNS. Yes, for the IP addresses, for a lot of configurations, you make a change. You say save and apply, and that's fine. Um, if you change the IP address, you do have to go all the way up to the top right-hand corner and do a reboot. Way up to the top right. The other way to do it, now it is saved into memory, so you could unplug the phone and plug it back in. Um, it's, it's kind of an awkward spot, and you know, just try to avoid unplugging and plugging it back in all the time, if, if you can, um, and just use the reboot function on your... Yeah, if you reboot, that's going to give an IP address. A lot of the other things, like under accounts, a lot of these account settings happen automatically. As soon as you click down the bottom, save and apply, those things will take effect. Okay, to set the individual accounts, again, the new phones, if you're getting a new phone today, um, under the accounts tab on top, we have accounts one, two, three, and four. It, it does get a little cluttered with the menus. Um, 
yeah, there's some good things and there's some, this is one that seems a little cluttered. So we actually have account one listed over here and that's the one that's expanded right now. If I click on the minus, that's gonna, you know, contract it. And I can open up which account I wanna work with. Primarily we'll be working with the general setting um, under each of these. So account one, account two, general settings, account one, general settings, and so on. The account name is what's going to show up on the screen of your phone. That has nothing to do with the server. You could call it anything that you want. So on my phone, I call it Paul105 so that I know it's on my server. I should really call it class, not mine. Um, in fact, let me make that change. Let's see what it looks like then. Um, I'll change it to the classroom server. And, um, <clears throat> and it's extension 105 in the classroom server. The SIF server is the server you're connecting to. So if you're connected to the classroom server, it's 172.16.207.0. If you're connecting to your group's server, like for these different extensions, it's going to be 172.16.207.xx, so whatever computer you're working with. The only other thing that we need here, other two things that we need, is the SIP user ID. So we don't need a secondary SIP server or the outbound proxy. We need the SIP user ID. This is the same as the, the login, you know, who you're logging in as. So we're going to log in as 105. And then the authenticate password. Um, we made all our passwords password, but this would be what is set up on that server. So I could have an extension of 105 on my server with a password of password, and you could have an extension of 105 on your server with a password of LTC. You just have to know what server you're logging into and what their password is for that user account. And now as soon as I click Save and Apply, if I click back over to my phone, that's one of those settings that did take effect right away. It changed my line one to say Class 105. The only reason I did that is so that I know this is extension 105 on the Classroom server. And logging in tells me that, that I'm logging in as extension 105. I, I could put anything I want. I could put Tom on there, um, but that doesn't tell me what's. I'm sorry? Probably. Let me just fill out this again. So I'm typing in what I want to show up on the phone. The SIP server is what you're logging into. The SIP user ID, oh, not 100, 105. 105, and then the password would be password. And again, I can look at the phone to that's working. Um, this, by the way, if it does not connect, if the password is wrong or you point to the wrong server or the account doesn't even exist at all, this will show up as class 105, will be grayed though, just be light grayed. If it's a dark gray, it's hard to tell on the screen obviously, but if it's a dark gray, that means it did connect appropriately. Yours is light gray? Okay, the other way to tell is by looking at the phone itself by on the web GUI. If you click under status, it's going to tell you which accounts are registered and which one's not, if it's successful or not, where, it, where it's going to log into with which user account. Now, here's like a show password, obviously. So who are you connecting to? Um, let's log in here again. If I'm looking at network basic settings, um, I did tell you to do is 8.8.8.8, .8 and that's going to be fine for what we're working on so far. There's a couple other things that I'm in of doing in the future. Um, so if you do have this, go ahead and change this to 172.16.16.140. Um, the only reason for that, the only thing we've used DNS for so far is the firmware update. And the firmware update, um, actually, does anybody know the secondary DNS for school? Is it 141? 140 and 141. 140 and 141? Okay, yeah. 141. So if you have that. The difference is that if I start doing some of the things that we talked about, like having auto provisioning, it's going to need to have a name associated with DNS, the school's DNS. Google's DNS isn't going to know anything about our school's DNS. So. 
But go ahead and make those changes, 172, 16, 16, 140, 172, 16, 16, 141. Uh, in the meantime, I'll make this other change on this. For the firmware, um, you don't have to change it. Just do the firmware one right now as the default. It's, it's like fm.grandstream.com or www.grandstream.com forward slash fm or something. Oh, what's in it right now? That's fine. Just leave it there. That's fine. That's okay. I have to reboot this phone anyway, so let's do it this way. <clears throat> oh, I missed this. Missed that screen. Let's come back to it. Um, yeah, the question was, can you just use a regular analog phone, um, like a cordless phone from home or a regular phone that you have? Yes, you can. However, you need an adapter, um, a SIP adapter. Which are little boxes, kind of like this, the cerebral voice terminal adapter. It's going to have a network connection on one side, and the other side is going to have a um, a, a phone jack off of it. I have one of these at home. Let me see if I can get to it. And you think of my IP address would be like 10.0.0.1.100, I believe. And so this is that device at home. So it's, it's a grand stream device. It's a little box that I plug a regular cordless phone into. So it looks very similar. You have a SIP IP address, the SIP user ID, and then the SIP password. Under basic settings, you know, all I have is, well, here we go, a static IP address of 1.100. And then um, just basic settings. Because I'm not physically controlling the phone, I have no control of the phone itself as far as what's on the screen or what the buttons do or whatever. Um, all I'm really doing is bridging the gap between a analog phone and my voice over IP. And these are pretty inexpensive. Yeah. The difference would be that you still have to buy the adapter, so that $5 analog phone um, you still need the, and again, I, I bought it used, and it's an older model. I think I paid $30, $40 for it probably, so it's, it's less expensive than the phone, but you don't get any of the features. Um, you can call an extension, and people can call you, but you don't have paging. Um, you don't have intercoming. You don't have any of those features because I don't actually control the phone. It also, like on these phones, it tells, you can have multiple accounts on there, the different lights showing different things. Um, those would have no features. It's just a single line. Sure, but that's not a voice over IP system. That's an analog system. It's going to be just like the phone here. Um, you dial a certain number to get into that analog system, and just like on here, I dial you know a certain set of combination of digits, and that's going to trigger the paging. On an analog system, the same thing for school. You know, you can use a regular phone from here. Well, I can't, but you know, you can page across the school system. Um, but that's a different type of system. If you're using voice over IP. You need to have everything being voice over IP. If you have an analog system, then everything's analog. Any for voice over IP, any IP connection you can use. If you have the adapter, the adapter switches it from analog to the digital, the voice over IP. You can't take an analog phone and just plug it into your voice over IP system. It doesn't recognize what that is. It, if you're going to plug an analog phone, it has to be plugged into an analog system. LTC still runs an analog phone system. They have not gone over to voice over IP yet. So it's using a regular analog phone with a very old system, including their voicemail, including their paging, including you know, extensions and everything. It's a manual process. If I want to change this phone, I have to physically punch a different wire to a different location. It's very location-oriented. This specific location on the punch-down block is extension 119. Oh, you want to make it 121? Not a problem. 
pull it off the rack, punch it down to 121. It's a very, very physical configuration. You can't reprogram the phone, where here, and that's the whole idea between analog and digital. The same thing with a regular phone line. If I have a phone line running to my house, I get a single call across that single phone line. That's my line. Same thing here. This is my line run to my classroom. So I have a physical line running to the classroom. If I want to change that, they change on the back end. The whole idea with packets and, and IP-based things is that you're doing packets and that you, you, you let the, the addressing happen on the software, not on the hardware. And just like right now, I have phys one physical connection out of this classroom, but we can all share it and have multiple calls. They can route different directions. I could change you. In fact, you do and on your phone right now. You could have four different extensions, four different numbers. Um, I would have to physically do that on this phone with four separate lines. Absolutely. That's exactly what they did. They connect from, you know, that person, you know, Joe, to Sally. I make that physical connection so the phones are physically connected. But that's it then. There's no call waiting. There is no multiple calls. You know, that person uses that line. No, no Y adapters. Okay, moving along for um, the voicemail. 172.16.207.0 should be my elastic server. And so my goal right now um, is just very basically, um, let's see, I got a lot of screens here, is to set up um, line one or account one classroom 105 extension with voicemail, set it up so I have it configured with my name on it, and um, to hopefully also tell me when I have a, um, a message waiting for me. And those are sort of the steps that I've outlined in the learning plan. Um, you're changing the mailbox settings, um, a couple other status settings on here. So um, I do most of the work within Elastics. I do most of the work within Elastics. I go to PBX, and I click on the extensions, which is where I'm working with. And I'm working with this specific case, extension 105. Voicemail is one of those things that you have to enable per extension or per user. Like if I want Chris and Todd and Wes and Marco to have it, I have to do this all individually. Um, this is just the way I've found it to work. Um, and we'll go with it. First thing is um, a little ways down, about half ways down, you have a mailbox name called 105 at device. Now that's fine for most things and voicemail will actually work without this, but this is what's gonna hopefully get the indicator light to work up on top. And by changing this from 105 at device to 105 at default. The next thing that I want to do is VM extension. That means what do you call to get your voicemail and star 97 is what we end up using. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this at this point, submit, and I'm going to show you where that comes from. If I click under feature codes in the upper left hand corner under PBX configuration, remember feature codes, this tells us what all the things that we can do and what the little codes are. If we go down towards the bottom, it says dialing voicemail is star 98 and my voicemail is star 97. The difference is, is that if you do star 97, it's whatever extension you're on right now, that's whose mailbox it thinks it is. So if I dialed star 97 from my phone, it would say, hey, what's your password for that extension? The other option is star 98, which is I can go from any phone, but then it's going to ask you what mailbox do you want. So I could still go to your office or I could go to a different phone someplace else and I could do star 98, enter my, my mailbox and then enter my password and access it. In order to get to my personal mailbox though, it's star 97.
Oh, to the other screen? Yeah, I'm going to go back to that now. So going back to extensions, I'm going to click on 105. This is what I'm working with. So what I've changed is mailbox to 105 at default, and then the VM over voicemail extension is star 97. I'm going to continue scrolling down towards the bottom. And not all the way to the bottom, but it says voicemail and directory. The voicemail and directory in the status is currently disabled. So that means that you don't have voicemail on this account. So I'm going to enable this. And then it's going to ask you for a, um, a password. This is the password used to access the voicemail system. This password can only contain numbers because you'll be working with it on a keypad from a telephone, so you can type in LTC. Um, the user can change the password. Um, once they get into the phone system, there's a full automated system saying that, you know, press this to change your password and so on. So right now, just to make it very easy, I'll make it four ones. We're not gonna make, do anything with email right now, but you can set it up to also email your voicemails to you. Um, it could tell you that you have a voicemail or actually send it as a WAV file to you. We're not going to get that far. You know, we could just delve in this forever. Um, this would be a whole this whole great class all in itself. Um, the pager email address, you could actually have it sent to a pager if you have a new alphanumeric pager. Um, as email as attachments, and what's that? Pagers? Sure. They do. Um, because one thing is I don't have to pay a, um, yeah, I can do that internally, um, or they're a lot cheaper than just regular cell phones. And if you're just trying to do one-way communication real quick, it's pretty cheap and easy. And they typically have better coverage, like if you have a bad coverage area. You know, so there's probably less and less of them, but they're still around. Um, email attachment, um, option to attach the voice to the email, like I said. Um, the ones we will be choosing, though, are to play the CID, which is the caller ID. So it's to let you know where the voicemail came from. And it's also going to play the envelope, um, which is going to be, um, I tell you what time it was sent and sort of just some of that information. So those are two that I'm just going to arbitrarily put on. That doesn't make it work or not work. The whole voicemail system, it just is what I'm choosing to put on there. Um, Let's see, the play the envelope, okay. And finally on the bottom, I wanna make sure I click submit. And then as always, this doesn't take effect until you click the bar across the top that says apply the configuration changes. And so now it's set up on my phone. I do want to make one change on my phone and I have not played with this on multiple phones. I've only done this on the newer phones. Um, so if you can follow along on the other phones, great. Um, we'll see what happens. I just haven't tried this on the older on the other phones. I'm going to my phone, which is 172.16.207.100. I'm logging in as admin. There's just one setting that I want to be changing on here. Now, I'm working with account one, so I'm going up to account, and account one in under general settings. And this is on the other phones, other places. I just didn't look it up, and I do apologize. There should be something called voicemail user ID. Voicemail user ID. And over here, where it says on the right-hand side, this ID is usually the VM portal access number, which means how do you get your voicemail? And the only reason we're doing this, this is not even that critical either, but if I do star 97 and save and apply, what that does on this specific phone, and again, it's not even critical that you have it, is this little button up here, now is programmed to the voicemail. So if I hit this button, password. and all it asked for was password. So it knew that it's from extension 105 and therefore said, you know, what's your password? Well, what is my password? I'm not sure if you can hear this or not. Let me 
You probably can you hear any of this at all? Kind of. Password. Okay, my password is four ones. You have no messages. Press two to change folder. Press three for advanced options. Press zero for mailbox options. So press zero for mailbox press options. Or pound to exit. Press one to record your unavailable message. After the tone, say your okay. unavailable message and then press the pound key. Hi, this is Paul. I'm sorry, I'm unavailable right now. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this recording. Your message has been saved. Press 1 to record your unavailable message. Press 2 to record your busy message. Press 3 to record your name. After the tone, say your name and then press the pound key. Paul Benfield. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this. Your message has been saved. Press 1 to record your unavailable message. Press 2 to record your busy message. Press 3 to record your name. Press 4 to manage your temporary greeting. Press 5 to change your password. Press star to return to the main menu. Please enter your new password followed by the pound key. 1, 2, 3, 4. Please re-enter your password followed by the pound key. Your passwords have been changed. Press 1 to record your unavailable message. So you can go through all those menus and work through that. Now, let me call extension 105. Paul Benfield. Is on the phone. Please leave your message after the tone. When done, hang up or press the pound key. Hey, Paul, give me a call when you get a chance. Thanks. Now, what that does is, if everything's set up right, um, in the upper right-hand corner, the voicemail light will light up, saying that you have a voicemail message waiting for you. And that's going to tell you what extension it's on. Um, again, this is the newer phones, but it's going to have some of the same features in their phones as well. So it's going to say that this one. Now, unfortunately, it covers the logo a little bit, so you kind of have to know your phone a little bit. So it covered up, you know, extension 105, but I know that's what it is. Now, since I have this little mailbox icon, I can say, hey, I have a mail item. I click on there. Well, which account am I working with? Just account one. Password. One, two, three, four. You have one new message. Press one for new messages. First message received at 934. That's the envelope part. Message from phone number one. And this is the caller ID part. Hey, Paul, give me a call if you get a chance. Thanks. Press 3 for advanced options. Press 5 to repeat the current message. Press 7 to delete this message. Press 8 to forward the message to another user. Or 9 to save this message. Press star for help or pound to exit. Press 1 to send a reply. Press 3 to hear the message envelope. So Press I can actually reply to the person through here since so it's all part of the phone system. Obviously, you couldn't reply to somebody outside the phone system. Press 3 for advanced options. Press message deleted. No more messages. So it's a typical voicemail system. The prompts prompt you through. Um, it tells you what to push for the various things. Um, it does save out to your server. So we created a pretty small server. Um, the server requires very little space itself. If you start doing voicemails, that's going to take up space. Um, each of those recordings, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, whatever the, the message set to, could add up. Um, hundreds of messages, hundreds of users, so that's really where you want to be, you know, making sure you have enough disk space. Uh, again, this is a um, kind of a standalone feature, nothing that we've really worked with so far um, as, you know, what we're going to do with things. Um, how this could be um, involved is if I work with, you know, Elastics and I start having this, um, any of these routing things that I worked with for routing, um, for my destinations is because of a voice mailbox now. I can now, you know, choose from the list of of voicemail messages that's going to go to. So if somebody's busy or if, you know, it, it's a certain time of day during lunch, I could just have it automatically just dump it to somebody's voicemail. So it just gives you one more criteria as far as the destination goes. And like it shows, I can you know give it any message that I want. It still goes to the same place.
which like is a message that's busy, you know, Paul's busy, Paul's unavailable, or just no message, and just says, leave a message for Paul, and it just dumps into my voicemail. It will notify me on my phone, either way, that I do have a message. So, questions on voicemail? All 20 minutes of it. Oh, lots of them. Good. Uh, Marco? Um, you can change it if you want. It's under PBX feature codes. Feature codes is what it's set up. The default, by the, this little checkbox here says use default. Um, everything's checked on ours. But for dialing, that is the default is star 97. If you didn't want that to be, you know, star 97, you could uncheck this box and then type in anything that you want. So you could actually make it, you know, dial 999. So if I dial 999, that's going to get me to voicemail. Um, so it, the, the default is a star 97. And it's under feature codes, right? So if I dial 999, um, let me submit the changes. So from my phone, Password. it brings me to my voicemail by dialing 999. Um, the only thing that, if I did, the only thing I have to change is that button on my phone. If I did change that, this is the only thing I've changed down here is what's the voicemail user ID. And it says user ID. That's really misleading. It's the voicemail access code. And so then, yes, I changed this to 999 so that um, this button then would be programmed to 999. But again, my lights is off, and I don't have any mailbox showing up there. So you should have some of the same features. Even if it doesn't notify you on the other phones, um, the whole voicemail system will still function. You just have to dial in to get your um, voicemail. You know, hit the, you know, dial star 97, log in, and it'll say you have no messages at this time. So it's really nice having the, the message waiting light for letting you know that you have a, it's called a M. MWI, a message waiting indicator. That's what it's called. They have acronyms for everything. MWI. The other one is, that one keeps coming up. I can't remember the name. It's BLF, which is a something. That's what I always forget. Busy lamp field, a busy lamp field. Um, okay, extra stuff right now. Don't pay attention if you're confused because I don't want to confuse you anymore. Um, a couple of other nice features, which is just kind of fun just to play with, is that I can program these phone these these buttons on the side, and one will tell you like what the statuses are of those extensions. So if I go back to my phone, and again if you know. If you're like, oh my word, I'm confused, then just close your eyes, turn off your screens. I don't want to further confuse you. Um, I want to go to settings, and I want to go under programmable keys, and I'm just going to use a couple keys down here. So this MPK, again, another acronym, is a multi-purpose key. Um, I can make it a busy lamp field. I'll use account one, and I'll use a value of 112, because I know that's Chris. And then I'll do another busy lamp field for um, Todd, which is 113. And I'll do another one for um, Sean, which is 121. And I'll just do those three. And I click Save and Apply. And um, all my phone, my phone has now switched to, oops, wrong button. It's three green lights. Um, if Sean, are you using... Can you use the, the classroom? Just pick up your phone and dial Todd. Now it's showing that Sean is on the phone and Todd's phone is ringing. Um, so you can see what the status is. And if I want to call those people, I could actually, you know, Chris is available, so I could just click Chris and it's going to dial Chris automatically. So it's a way of like being an operator type thing. You can see what's going on. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, Todd's on the phone right now. You know, I can take a message for him. Or no, he's available. Let me transfer. Um, you can enter their calls from here. There's other ways of doing that, but not just from this one. On the server, definitely. 
yeah, there's operator functions for that. So that's a fun one just to, you know, watch and do. And there's all kinds of other ways that you can work with those lights as well. Speed dials, um, you can call out, you know, say I want, you know, number four to be school, um, 693-1000. Save and apply. And then all to do is hit, you know, line four. Thank you for choosing Lakeshore Technical College. And I get LTC, so. Time during this message. To speak with an operator, press zero or remain on the line. And Obviously, you would label everything what it is and not just leave, you know, guessing like, hmm, I wonder what this button does. Oh, yeah, that's the one that calls the paramedics. I forgot that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Not the red button. <laughs> Um, I use 105 just as a pure example. Um, you can make it, in fact, you can do them from all of them. I can do it for 100, 101, and, you know, I could do it for all of them. In fact, let me just do it very, very quickly for that. Let me switch over to Elastics, and let me go to my extension 100. And I, I have to do the same things, though. So I have to change this to default. And, and I don't ask, ask this one. I don't know. Um, I was just reading up on it, and that's what they said it has to be done. So change it from device to default. The extension is uh, star 97, and then I'm going to enable it, and I'm going to give it a password of 1111, and then I'm going to say yes, yes, and I think that's it, and then submit. And I can go to extension, what's my other extension? Uh, 101. Extension 101, so that would be Paul 2. So I change this to default again, star 97. And then I choose, let's see, what else am I missing? Here, this one. <laughs> Enable, 1111, yes, yes, and submit and apply. So now the voicemail is actually set up on both of those. So from 101 I can from 105 I can dial 101. The person at extension. Now I didn't record my name yet, so it just says the person at this is on the phone. Leave your message after the tone. When done, hang up or press the pound key. Hey, give me a call. Thanks. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this recording. Your message has been saved. Okay, so now it's going to show me on my screen that I have a voicemail on that account um, and the message indicator. Oops, I kind of went off the screen here a little bit. And the message indicator light is telling me that I have that. Now I can do other ones as well, you know, 105. Paul Benfield. Is on the phone. Please leave your message after the tone. When done, hang up or press the pound key. Give me a call. Thanks. Thank you. Press 1 to accept your message has been saved. And now I show an envelope on this one. So it's going to show, again, it's going to be the light's going to be on there. And I have two messages. Well, I, it doesn't tell you how many messages. It, in fact, if you have multiple messages, it only shows the envelope still. It doesn't say like three or four. I don't think. didn't seem to the other day. Anyway. Other question, Todd. So you can do this in all of them. In fact, you should. Ideal in a corporate environment, you would. If your voicemail status is disabled, you don't have any options for checking anything underneath here. So before you do anything, you have to enable it. Then enter the password. And then, and these are just arbitrary. If you don't want to put those, that's fine. But it's going to say you have one message, and here's the message. I like the point that's going to say it was received from Paul at 9:45 a.m. You know, that's good information to have. It was from, and if it's internal, it's going to give a longer caller ID. If it's outside, it's going to say just a caller ID. Um, but if it's inside, it's going to give you the option then to reply to that person. Um, forward it to somebody else. Other questions on voicemail? 
if you dial star nine seven, it's going to ring. It's going to bring up the voicemail for that extension. So, in, in, for example, let me show you that the screen. So, if I use line two, if I use line two, oopsie, if I use line two, and it's beeping because I have a voicemail. If I do star nine seven. Password. It's going to be for extension 101. If I dial it from 100, star 97, it's going to be the voicemail for, for 100. If I dial star 98, star 98, Comedian mail. Mailbox. now I'm on extension 100. Com but I can still get my voicemail for extension 100. You have no messages. Press two so to change from a, a different Press. extension, I can still get another mailbox. Um, by the way, if you're noticing, like if I log on to here, star 97, send Password. 1, 2, 3, 4. These show up on the screen. You have one. You may or may not want that to show on the screen, and there's ways of in the phone configuration to not show the DTMF characters. It's a, like in call or in session. I forgot the exact wording of it. So, like if you're afraid that somebody looks at it and it's like, oh, they found my voicemail password, um, you can disable that in the phone. Let me look real quick. Why not? Um, maybe under security. Actually, it might be under each individual account. Finally found it here. It is under... Um, under settings, the settings, and then call features, settings, call features, um, this one says disable in-call uh, DTMF display. So when set to yes, the DTMF digits entered during the call will not be displayed. So especially if you have like long menus, hit one for this, hit two for that, hit three for that. Oh no, go back to one, and then enter enter your credit card number, all 16 digits, plus your you know birth year and your, you know, the number of characters in your mother's maiden name, you know, or whatever it's going to be, you know, you're actually typing all that out on the screen. So, <laughs> on the phone part, find my phone again. For the voicemail user ID. Um, it does have to be done for each of the accounts. So general voicemail user ID star nine seven. Because you could be logging into different accounts, into different servers, which would have different voicemail IDs. Save and apply. And the last one. There you go. Yeah, the the whole voicemail system is done, um, you know, through the automated through its own internal system. So again, if I'm just using line one star nine seven, password. So I have to enter the password to get into it. You have no messages. Press two to change folders. Press three for advanced options. Press zero for mailbox options. So mailbox op options is zero. Press one to record your unavailable message. Press two to record your busy message. After the so I haven't done this one yet. Message, and then press the pound key. I'm sorry, but I'm busy right now. I can't take your call. Um, I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this recording. Your message has been saved. Press 1 to record your unavailable message. Press 2 to after the tone, say your unavailable message, and then press the pound key. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this recording.
Press 2 to listen to it. Press 3 to re-record your message. After the tone, say your unavailable message and then press the pound key. Hi, this is Paul. I'm sorry I'm not able to take your call right now. Please leave your name and number and I'll call you back as soon as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Press 1. Your message so it's, has been saved. It's all done to the phone. Um, you can re-record the messages, see what they are, put your name on there. You have an you have three mess. Well, actually, you only have two messages. Um, two that you can record. One is um, busy, and the other one is um, unavailable. So that's like if it rings, it doesn't go anywhere. The other way is if you're on the phone, it's going to roll into voicemail. You do have additional options, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just go back into here again. Password. You have no. Press one to record your unavailable message. Press two to record your busy message. Press three to record your name. Press four to manage your temporary greeting. Press five after the tone. Say your temporary. Yeah, so you can set up another one for the temporary greeting. So you can, for whatever reason, hey, I'm out sick today. I'll be back Monday, or I'm on vacation, or you know, or like just I'm just out of the office. I guess you want to say where you are, what you're doing. I'm out of the office until, but you don't have to re-record your normal unavailable messages or your, your um, busy one, so it's a temporary one, and then you toggle between your normal messages and your temporary one based on another menu item. So you have to read through all that. None of that stuff can be done online. Um, so the voicemail system is not managed online at all as far as what menu options you have. It's all done through those prompts. Okay, if you do star 97, that means that the, the extensions you're calling from doesn't have a mailbox. So that means whatever extension you're calling from just doesn't know that there's a vo that the voicemail is not set up for it. So then it's going to ask you which mailbox you want to work with. So you can do two things. I did not I did not set you up with this on the serv the classroom server um, for voicemail. So you can log in and set up yourself or set yourself up on your own server. And then you're able to the enable the the voicemail through all those stuffs we talked about. The server manages the ability to have voicemail, so that's done through the Elastic server. So on my server right now, the only accounts that have voicemail are 100, 101, and 105. Um, I guess maybe I should set it up for everybody just so you know that it's there and you can play within the school server. So I'll work on that while you guys work on your next activity um, so you can play that if you, with that if you want. Did you already set yours up? So 112 is set up? Okay. Okay. So I'll set up the other ones as well. Okay. Other questions? Yes. No. No, no. You don't have to. Um, you can select all the extensions, um, but what you can do is, we are talking about that before, you can do an import for an Excel spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, you could um, basically, you know, that's easy to copy and paste, that you could go through and basically enable a bunch of people, the ones that you wanted to, and then re-import that in. Um, and with the change settings. And, and again, like I said, we could go on and on with all kinds of different features and, and functions of this. Um, if I go to, let me just show this to you real quick. Um, let me go to my Elastic server, 172.16.207.0 is my server. And um, I'm under PBX extensions, but there's, I'm under PBX, and there's a tab up here for batch extensions. And you can even download your current extension CVS file. So I can download this. It's going to download it as a CSV file. So, you know, I might put like today's date or something, just so I know what it is 2013 02-19 um, Elastics. Or, or, or here, I'll do it this way Class Extensions. And then once I have it,
Now, it's going to try to convert it, and I have to look at these a little bit closer, comma separated. But I'll just show you what it looks like, essentially. Here's all the extensions that I have for all the um, all the users. So the display names are the names for some people and just extensions for others, the user extension I'm working with. And if you look over here, here's the voicemail password, voicemail status. So I could, in fact, you know, take enabled and just drag it down through all of here, and I just enabled all those extensions. Now I need to give them passwords, and you could give them all an initial password of, well, Sorry, I want to auto number. Sometimes it works the way you want it to, and sometimes it doesn't. So you can give them all the same password. Um, there are a couple of other settings that you have to change, um, which aren't even on there, I guess. Um, you have to add another field then for that, that device name, for de like 106 at default instead of 106 at device. So you can add those fields as well. Drag it down. You that you could, you could, except it doesn't match completely. You could use a concat statement, which would take the extension and add it to the at part. I've done that before. 101 at default, um, 111 at default, 132 at default, 103 at default. Um, you actually have to use the concat because you want the value in there. You just can't put the B3 at something. Um, you can use it for formulas, but you can't use it for um, strings. There's a way of joining those together, so it does work. Um, but that's what you can do, and then once you get this, the, the tricky part is you have to make sure it's a CSV file still at the end. A lot of times these applications want to convert it to their format or even to an XLS format, and then you just re-upload it, and then all those features are in place. And, and we're really not going to be covering that, so I'm going to discard those changes. Okay, moving along, um, we'll have additional time to ask additional questions and just play around additional features. Um, probably, um, you know, a couple weeks we'll be working on the final project, and through that process, you know, you'll have additional questions. Um, you will be working with a partner. Um, so, and it's just with one partner. Um, I, let's see, two, four, six, eight, eight. Your partner, partner. Okay, so we have even number today, and so whoever's missing, we'll just have to pair up and, you know, work out. Um, make sure you consistently work with the same person because you're going to be building on the same server and going through that whole process. Um, you do have to complete the whole thing, all the, making sure that the whole system works and it's set up the way that I've defined it to be set up, um, unless, of course, we find a technical error where it just doesn't work that way, and then I'll correct it and let you know about that. Out on Learning Plan 7, um, in groups of two, complete the final Voice over IP phone system configuration, and it's a PDF file, so you can download and print it. You can't. Oh, I know why, because defaults to saying you can't do that. Yeah, there's a little minor change. By default it says don't allow the students to see this. That doesn't make any sense. I completely agree. Okay, so this is the configuration. Um, it's a two-page document. This is what you have to build. Um, you'll be coming up to the Elastic server with an IP address of 172.16.206.xx, which is one of your computer numbers. Um, you can't just randomly choose one from the room because it could conflict with somebody, but if you're working with a partner, it'll either be your computer number or their computer number. As you can see, this is a 206 address, so it should not conflict with your 207 server. And you can keep your existing 207 one to refer back to um, and you know, reference back and forth and actually keep both of them running. You ultimately have to create one with a 206 address. You'll be creating um, 10 extensions. 
100 through 109. Uh, 100 is going to be for operator 1, 101 is for operator 2, sales 1, sales 2, hardware 1, hardware 2, software 1, software 2, a testing account, which is for your purpose, and then ultimately um, create an extension for me, and that's what I'll be logging in as to evaluating to make sure it's all set up properly. So those are the accounts you'll be setting up. You'll be setting up ring groups, um, 600, which is a ring all. Yes. Um, I would like you to create a new Elastic server. Yes. I would like you to create a new Elastic server. Um, the ring groups are 100 through 107, which is a ring all. It doesn't include your test account or my account. Um, the operations ring group is 100 and 101. Uh, not operations, operators. As you can see, we have a sales group, a hardware group, and a software group. Um, and it tells you what extensions those would be. There's also a paging group, which would be identical to the ring groups, other than it's a 500 series instead of a 600 series. So you have to make sure that you have all those set up. On the phone side, you're having two phones. There's two of you. You're having two hard phones. Um, hard phone one is going to have an IP address of 172.16.206.1xx which whatever you choose for your server should be the same XX as your hard phones. So if you agree on choosing you know, 41, then all of your addresses would be 206.41, and your phone one would be 141, and phone two would be 241. Your four accounts, um, account one is operator one, account two is sales one, account three is hardware one, and account four is software one. And then your hard phone two would be all the twos of those. So it tells you exactly how to configure that. You'll have a soft phone for doing testing. And so you'll be able to dial in and you know check in and see if all your routes and everything works. Good so far? Okay. This isn't hard. What's that? Do you want to choose your partner or do you want me to choose your partner? You want to choose your own partner? Okay, choose your own partner. Okay, um, now the fun part. Um, this is going to be your call system uh, of how it's going to work. Um, it ends up being that you can't hang up until somebody answers. In the in the normal business hours, correct. If it's in normal business hours, so I'm going to read. This sort of work through this with you. What's going to happen is there's going to be an incoming call, and there's a time condition for normal office for normal business hours, and you know that can be changed obviously, but you're going to have to configure it what normal business hours are. You'll need to test it either way, so you'll be able to. You'll have to be able to change that time so that it falls in the normal business hours and not. Let's do the simplest route first, which is not in the time condition. So um, it is not normal business hours. It's going to give you a closed announcement. By the way, these are decision trees. This is a flow chart. This is a decision. It's a diamond, and then this document form is going to be any announcement. So anywhere you see this symbol, it's going to be an announcement within your system. So there's a closed announcement. I'm sorry that we're currently closed, blah, 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 blah. And then it's going to go right into, we're, you know, I'm sorry that we're closed. Our normal, our regular hours are blah, 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 blah. And we can be found at the corner of 6th and Main or whatever you want. And you can make these up. Um, be creative with them. Have fun with them. Um, You will. You do not have to say these words. I'm just giving you an idea that you need some kind of closed announcement. You need to then tell what your regular hours are and then where you can be located. So it's just something along those lines. At that point, it's going to do announcement, call in the next announcement, call in the next announcement, and then going right to hang up. So it's just going to hang up at that point. Now, ideally, since we have voicemail built into it now, you could dump it to a voicemail um, box if you wanted to, but you know, since it's just something we covered today, I don't have that in the flow chart. Now we get into the normal business hours, which would be the majority of the calls. So you'll have a main menu IVR. It's going to have six selections on it. 
it's going to say hit one for the hours, hit two for your location, three for sales, um, four to talk to someone in support, or zero for the operator. Um, that's actually a zero, not a six. Sorry, where was this located? Now, there's ways of doing this. So, number one is hours. So, when you hit one, so following this tree down, these are what the pers push person pushes. If they push the number one, it will read the normal hours. So, if the, you know, if it says for normal hours, press for, for hours, press one. They press one. Our regular hours are Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. There's a feature in here, and you have to look through and see how it's configured to return this then back to the main menu. So when they hit one for the hours, it then comes back saying for hours, press one. For location, press two. If they press two, it'll say we're located at, and then return back to for hours, press one. For location, press two. For sales, press three. If you press three for sales, it rings the sales ring group. It rings the ring group, which is both their extensions, 102 and 103. If they answer it, well, then you can just hang up. So if one of the two people answer it, then it you know goes down to the hang up over here. Um, yeah, going back to the IP addresses again, um, this, this is for you, for example, your computer 13. So if you are going to you know be part of your you know obviously you're part of your group. Um, your your server then would be 172.16.206.13 would be your server. You'd have two phones next to you, you know, yours and your partner's. Your first phone would be 172.16.206.113, and the second phone would be 172.16.206.213. Okay. And your soft phone just runs on a on a regular computer, so it doesn't need an IP address. No, um, each each person in the group does not have to create a new virtual machine and set up the phones. Um, this is a truly group effort, um, so choose your partner wisely. <laughs> um, that you between the two of you, you're going to decide on. You know, say you work with Wes. You know, I don't know who you can work with. Doesn't matter. You're 13. You're 14. Flip a coin and saying, you know what, we're going to go with 14. So we're going to do dot 14, dot 114, dot 214. And better make sure that Wes shows up if he's going to have the server. You probably want to have a backup of your of the server that you're doing on your own virtual machine. You know, so yeah, go ahead and let that person create it on their on your portable hard drive. But before the class ends, you should probably have a copy of it in case something happens to it, because your grade is online too. You know, oh, I lost my dog ate it. You know, um, so yes. Um, we should get in the practice of using the school ones. I got a little lazy because it's like it's a lot easier typing 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Um, we should be in the practice of using proper DNS configuration, which would then be 172.16.16.140 and 172.16.16.141. That would be the proper way of doing it. So, um, do, I, do I need to, should I continue going through the whole flow of the flow chart? Is that valuable or? Is it like you can print it out and figure it out and ask questions if you have them? Yeah. Print it out and then ask questions if you have them. Yes, Dan. The top right? Correct. Correct, correct. That's a, that's a tricky thing. Um, it can't, no, it's not. It's not. There's a feature in there that um, there's a checkbox um, that says, if it came from an IVR, return to the IVR. Otherwise, go the normal path. So just giving you a heads up on that one. Um, this is the normal path. So you're going to say that this announcement is going to call this announcement, and this announcement is going to call this announcement, and this announcement is going to hang up. However, if you call an announcement from an IVR, which this is not from an IVR, um, so if I call it from an IVR, it returns the IVR. 
And I was a little skeptical of it, so I actually tested it, and it does work. Um, so it, it's kind of it's kind of fun, you know, just to do it that way and to figure it out what it is. But but you're absolutely correct. You're saying there's like multiple paths and multiple recordings. You can do it with the settings there. And I didn't know how to draw that. That's why I you know I just wrote this on here. Press one, and it's going to go there. But it's also going to return to the IVR. So you have to look at that. And right off the top of my head, I can't remember if it's on the IVR side or the announcement side. Um, I think it's on the announcement side um, that says, if it came from an IVR, return it there. Otherwise, use the normal destination. Well, let's just look real quick. Why not? Um, announcements. Normal closed. So when I'm done, when I'm done, I'm going to terminate the call. Or if I check this, it says if the announcement came from an IVR, the destination below will be ignored and instead it will return to the calling IVR. Do you see that feature? Okay. So that's where you would do that. So if it came from an IVR, it returns it and skips the destination. So it's not going to go to the next message or it's not going to go to hang up. Excellent question. Okay, I'm not going to review the rest of it. Um, if anybody has individual questions with it, they can certainly ask me. Um, I will print this out for you so you can have copies of it. Make sure you don't write on it, though, because I want to keep it pristine. So no notes. Okay, I'll let you write on it. We're going to save this for next year. I'm here to help you through this, but you do have to get through this entire thing. The entire system has to function, and when I test it, I'm going to go through every menu option and every scenario. No, 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 definitely not today. Um, no, this will not happen today. Um, I, I'll, I'll see how it goes of how many classes. So next week, we'll definitely be working on it. So the entire class we built on it. So. For those that didn't make it to class today, really need to make it to class next week because this isn't something you can do at home because you need the physical phones to do this, unfortunately, unless you have physical phones to do this with. You can't take it with you. The phones stay here. Yeah. Other questions about the flow? Just watch the symbols, try to understand the logic before you start to program anything. If and the lines don't make sense, please ask. All the automated attendants, their answers are down the line underneath it. These are answers one, two, three, four, and zero down here. For this automated attendant, I have one, two, three. Oh, three is over here. There you go. Three is returned to the main menu. A couple of the lines got a little cross, but you know I did the best that I could of laying things out to make them as clear as possible. Okay.